Hello there, I hope you are all having an absolutely wonderful day and welcome back. But if you are new here, then welcome. My name is Chewy and I play strategy games. We like to play a mostly EU4 on this channel. This series is going to be a bit of modded EU4, but I also play games over at twitch.tv slash Chewy Shoot. So if you want to see some more interesting, fun stuff on stream, I suggest you check that out or check out our VODs channel where we're putting the Twitch streams up on YouTube after the fact. Uh, not everybody likes Switch. That's understandable. Chewy VODs linked in the description below the video. Uh, today, we're going to be starting a new campaign. This is not just any campaign. This is Flavor Universalis. Uh, recently got an update for Roma Invicta. You can see here there is a special bookmark specifically for Roma Invicta. Most courageous fellow soldiers and all loyal, honest citizens. You know well that the hour has come. The enemy of our faith wishes to oppress us even more closely by sea and land with all his engines and skills to attack us with the entire strength of his siege force as a snake about to spew its venom. He's in a hurry to devour us like a savage lion. For this reason, I am imploring you to fight like men and brave souls as you have done from the beginning up to this day. Against the enemy of our faith, I hand over to you my glorious, famous, respected, noble city, the shining queen of cities, our homeland. Embark in a masterfully created campaign as the last emperor of Byzantium in a struggle to repeal, or repel the Ottoman invaders and restore the grandeur of Rome across the European continent and beyond. So yes, Byzantium has received quite a facelift in this new patch, and we're also going to be playing with uh, trade goods expanded. There's also advisors expanded and idea groups expanded. And this is, uh, as per Big Boss, the uh, one of the devs who's pretty active in my Discord. Let's try out Byzantium and see how we're doing here. But first and foremost, we're gonna have to uh, fight off the Ottomans. Ah, Byzantium. If at any point you guys are wondering, why does my game look different than yours, dude? It's because I have a mod pack and it's gonna be linked in the description below. So if you want your game to look like mine, you can do it. It's the best. We even have the most impressive mod in the entire workshop. The classic You Suck and I Hate You mod made by yours truly. Actually, I think Parmi made it and I redid the code. Anyways, we're going to be playing as Byzantium and Flavor Universalis gave them a really, really crazy mission tree here. And we're going to be going through it and we're going to be having a lot of fun. So if you guys are excited for that, make sure you do let me know by leaving a like on the video and leave a comment down below. Have you guys played with Flavor Universalis? Uh, is there any other nations that you like that you think might be good to showcase on the channel? And uh, how do you usually rush this uh, first war with the Ottomans? Because I'm curious. We're going to try it out and we're going to go through our mission tree and see how we can manage it. So first off, raise a galley fleet and be at war. We get a couple of extra galleys. So I guess it lets you kind of get a little extra boost there. I took a look briefly through it and it does seem like a few of these are uh, kind of... I don't want to say training wheels, but it basically makes the first war with the Ottomans a little bit easier. Just a little bit. Not anything crazy. Uh, so army force limit 100% gives us a general that uh, his skill base is based off of nobility estate cap to 80. So we're going to try to give the uh, nobility a little bit more in is it influence influence. So we can try that secure the Hellespont, which is to occupy this. So I looked at this one. This one looks particularly interesting. All provinces in the Thrace area. One of the following must be true is controlled by Byzantium. That means occupied. And if I occupy all of them, it gives it to me. Now, that's funny because it's the Ottomans capital in Adirne or Adirne or however it's pronounced. So that's weird. But 5000 manpower, that's not nothing. That's good. Prevent the collapse. Have stability of at least one and total dev of at least 50, which gives us AE impact and province war score costs and claims to the entire Balkan region. Subjugate the Balkans the Bulgars and we get some more uh, stuff the end of Bulgarian independence and then you can see here there's a couple more fun ones and so you can see most of them are uh, centered around conquest so then we come down here to this branch now uh, pursue religious ideals which is to have the clergy loyal and stuff like that and powerful and get some patriarch authority issues dev and prestige very good Stab legitimacy, that's nice. Trade in the Bosphorus, which will give us uh, extra... If we have extra trade power and we have burger privileges, we get uh, 20 Diplo power per privilege granted. Okay, so there's a little bit of incentive to maybe give the burgers a few extra things there. And um, be allied to a bunch of people and have the Pope like me. And we get a Diplomat who is 66% cheaper. So that's cool. But wait, there's more. You come down here and you get Restore the Theme System. I think it's Theme. Um by having four provinces with at least five manpower that have barracks in them. And we get uh, an event here. The Porta 
Aurea. I'm not going to be able to pronounce anything right, by the way. I'm not Greek. I'm an American dude, and I have an American English tongue. My pronunciation for these things is not good, so I apologize. So, upgrade the Theodosian walls. You might be wondering, what are the Theodosian walls? Well, this mod actually adds a few more things um, for... Um, uh, what are these great projects here? So you can see here local development or local defensiveness 30% plus side garrison size So if we take a look over here at our Great projects, you can see there's a few of them the Belgrade fortress or Belgrade fortress the Cathedral of Florence the leaning tower of Pisa There's a bunch of them La, Sa La Scala um, This one here, so you can see there's there's plenty of them. There's also Arc de Triomphe or however it's pronounced Triomphe which you can get after the Age of Revolutions. I guarantee you the Brandenburg Gate has been added. There you go. All the people screeching on Reddit can uh, now quit crying their little crocodile tears. The Hanseatic City Hall. Yeah, most of these are regular. The Winter Palace. Take a look at that one. Again, a legendary statesman trait for our ruler, if uh, possible. So I think that's pretty cool. The Kremlin also. So lots of interesting stuff. There's also the Great Library. You can re rebuild it in the Pharaohs of Alexandria, which is the light Great Lighthouse, I think is what that is. Um, so trade efficiency, very cool stuff. I am quite interested in seeing how it all plays out. Is the Parthenon the only one? Yes. Okay. So anyways, let's see here. We are rivaled by Epirus, Moldavia, and Genoa. So I will rival. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll just rival all three of them back. That's fine. Uh, and right off the rip, we want to ally Skanderbro if we can. Now this, um, Okay. This sort of strategy that I have is uh, anybody who's watched me play Byzantium before knows that I am a big fan of uh, Budget Monk Strat, and uh, that is the one that I plan to employ today. So right off the rip, select these guys and get them all down to Corinth, uh, because we have no intention of uh, running with that. We don't want to get stack wiped here in Constantinople. We have activate new goods for trade goods expanded. Of course, restore our name here. I don't think that actually does anything for us. Yeah, we are Byzantium. And highlight monuments we don't need because there is now a uh, great projects map mode. So you got strategic resources. So I guess I could explain a little bit about TGE, trade goods expanded. It's just that there is a lot of different trade goods. But if you take a look here, and I know Artemis had integrated it into his mod here. Um, you have all these guys here. But uh, if you scroll down here, we have a thing called latent goods, which are really cool. And this is what really makes uh, TGE shine, in my opinion. So you can see here, uh, the UI is a little convoluted. It's a little hard to understand exactly what's going on, but I'm going to do my best to explain it as we go. If you have a province that is at least 10 dev, Miltech 7, and at least 10 innovativeness, and you have two provinces, one that has copper and one that has tin, and the goods produced are at least 0.4 or, and 0.3, it will change the trade good of the province that is the original one, the one that you're selecting, to cannons. Uh, and if you are trading in cannons... You get or so what that does is it basically replaces the building so it's it's a free building slot because it gives itself the extra building slot so you can build it in any province no matter what active it raises the governing cost but if you're trading in them you get artillery combat ability 10 percent very strong and if you can spam them in like high dev high production value provinces you can see how that could be really useful like if you were up here in uh sweden you had like dallas Skogen or whatever and uh, you could um, build something here, say, you know, mm, I don't know, goods produced. Uh, yeah, probably probably just this one, honestly. Uh, but then you can see there's a bunch of them. Technology cost, if you're the good produced. Admin efficiency, if you do jewelry, which I think is amber, gems, pearls, or silver. So lots of really interesting stuff here. So if we take a look at our strategic codes, we have glass. We have marble here in Athens. And then we have... Um, uh, what is this? Olives and then grapes or wine. So nothing super good, but we'll see what we can do here. So ideally we get a Diplo rep guy. We do. We have one. Trade steering. Cool. Privateering efficiency. All right. Army tradition decay. State maintenance. So a lot of these uh, advisors seem pretty interesting. We are going to do the classic. Um, well, first of all, let's take a look here and see what we can do. We need to figure out our diplomacy as well. This uh, initial war is going to be probably the most important one of uh, the entire campaign because this is the one that uh, makes you 1444 if you screw it up. So let's play to the strength of the mission tree here. So originally we want to build up to 100% of our force limit. That's fine. We're going to obviously do that. Uh, raise a fleet. So what we need to do is we need to recruit as many men as possible. And uh, we'll probably end up 
doing a couple of these things. So Monopoly on Glass, eh, I don't think we need the money. So we want to do a couple of things that are going to give the burgers loyal loyalty. Let's go indebted to them as well. And uh, let us insult our rival, who is Epirus Genoa. So let's see here. Do, do I share any rivals with you? He has no rivals selected. That's unfortunate. What about you, Rhodes? No rivals selected either. It would be really nice to ally these guys. But it doesn't look like they're interested. What about a royal marriage, Skander bro? Close. All right. So let's just send a scornful insult to these guys. Tell them that they suck and that we hate them. What that does is it drops our prestige down below zero. And uh, then we can click this one here, which will give us 20 prestige. Pretty good. Clergy. Generally, I like to do oversight of the clergy. And then religious state for extra admin mana. And then we like to do on mill. Uh, we want to give them as much influence as possible. So Sup supremacy of the crown, right of council. Uh, let's also go with... Primacy of the nobility. Mm, it doesn't give them any influence. That's okay. Uh, so generally, what I could do now is sell titles and then use that money to fund the war effort. I'm tempted to just not and just yoink crown land and just try to shoot for 30 again. The nobility have a ton of land. Their influence is going to be very high. <sighs> I want them to have land so they'll be more influential. But uh, I think this is the move. So if you just select land and we don't even need to summon diet, it'll happen regularly. And uh, being indebted to the burgers is fine because that allows us to um, essentially not have to worry at all about um, inflation or uh, which one I'm looking for. Uh, not inflation, uh, interest. Interest is very cheap. And so a lot of people do not utilize these burger loans. These burger loans, look at that. I have five loans, 0.07 ducats a month. That's it. It's very strong. It's very, very strong. So let's have you guys uh, protect trade in Constantinople for now. A little bit of extra money. And uh, we need to improve relations with you and improve relations with you. And uh, as far as I know, that's all we need to do here. Let's also put you guys over here on... Hostile trading, and then as soon as we get our diplomat back, we can do our first unpause here. We got our first event here, the Decay of Rome. I am Rome. I am dying. Uh, okay, conflict decay and lost territories on all fronts have led to the imminent downfall of our empire. The Turks have surrounded us on all fronts, threatened to make Constantinople take Constantinople from us, while the Venetians are eyeing our last provinces in Moria. Now more than ever, we must rescue the little we have left. What little we have left, defend our sovereignty, and restore the old grandeur of the glory of the Roman Empire. So, until we complete the Prevent the Collapse or the Imperial Throne missions, we get uh, Stab Cost Modifier, Yearly Prestige, Yearly Legitimacy, and we just take some serious hits. We lose a Stab, but we gain some cores on some areas against the Ottoman. So, a little bit of insult to injury there. That's okay. We'll boost that up eventually. I think we're going to focus on... So we have Jonas uh, Paleologos, and, uh, who is, I believe, the last emperor of the Romans. Actually, Constantine was the last emperor of the Romans, if I recall correctly. Anyways, um, let's focus on Mill. If we can rush through and uh, get Mill tech even early in this war, that would be great. And let's also take a look at our generals here. I will recruit one. I will make you and you. Mm, none of you guys are very good. Yep. Unfortunate. No siege pips either. That's okay, though. So, all right. As we continue to uh, build up our units, and I believe we're probably going to build a few, but not a whole lot. Uh, something like this is fine. The rest will go to galleys. Going over our naval limit. We need to make sure we have naval superiority here. It's going to be very important. Um, yeah, the low crown land is not ideal, but um, I think it'll be okay. Now, ideally, we can get these guys to like us a little bit more. But uh, yeah, man, it's a... Uh, not being able to pick up any allies here is going to be a little tough for us. Let's see here. Wallachia wants to ally. I'll ally them. That's fine. We have Athens as a vassal, of course. We have this one here, which gives us a general with 60 tradition. <sighs> Two siege pips is good, though. A 304, no shock. That's not ideal, but that's okay. And so, the whole strat, and I mentioned this before, the budget monk strat is exactly this. 
they have these forts mothball this one here and this oh this one's maintained actually mm, that's unfortunate well hopefully hopefully they do that so right now the theodosian walls give us 20 percent local defensiveness that's solid uh we can also do the defensiveness edict which gives us another 33 and uh so that will be helpful hopefully if we want to base race them we can do that we also need to make sure that we are building spy network on these guys since we've switched this guy over here to hostile trading that's going to help us out quite a bit this one over here, we're going to set to establish communities because we're going to improve with uh, the MAMs. And hopefully they will help fund the war effort. Uh, I will Royal Mary Wallachia. That's fine. And uh, we got a consort here who is a 101, Draculesti. Very good. So yes, this fort here is mothballed. And hopefully this one will be as well. We'll see what happens here. Generally, they mothball this one, but... Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're doing here. But we start off with a truce with them, if I recall correctly. No, really? We don't have a... Oh, no, they have a truce with everybody else. Yes. Okay, well. <sighs> we have the diplomatic advisor, so that's good. The reason why you want to get siege ability on these guys is because it will help us with... Um, it will help us with... Uh, whatchamacallit? Spy net... Spy siege ability. Spy network gives siege ability. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, this fort is still maintained. But the idea is, is that you bum rush them and you siege them down before they, um... Oh, the knights are raiding me, you sons of guns. They will ally me now after they've already raided me, unfortunately. Oh, no. I should have guaranteed them. Yeah, that was my fault. So let's proclaim a guarantee to Skanderbro. And see if that will... Oh, yep, very good, very good. So it looks like we're going to be able to get an alliance with him. These guys have a truce, so that's not going to work, though. Let's mark these guys as uh, threatening to us and see if that affects anything here on the monthly tick. We need to ally Skander Bro. If we can use him in the war, he's good. If you guys don't know, Skander Bro is a, I believe, a 5-5 five, five, or a 6-6-6 six, six, six general. If I recall correctly, he's the best general in the game in the 1444 start date. He also happens to be the ruler here, Girgi Skanderbeg. So... Interesting character. Uh, if you're ever interested in some interesting history from this time time period, look up uh, Gyrgyz Skanderbeg. Very interesting person. He was a uh, general, and he was actually, I believe he may have been a Janissary who defected, if I recall correctly. So we are now allied to Skanderbro, and take a look at that. 555 five, five general. Three stars. So, if I were to attack these guys, he would join, but you can see here, we uh, certainly do not have uh, much going on here. So, we have cores... It gave us a bunch of cores over here, which is good. And if what I'm saying, what I'm seeing is correct here in this mission tree, we're going to get those immediately given to us. Thrace is this entire state here. So that's a decent bit of dev. And Gallipoli is a fort as well. So I think what we're going to do here. Okay, I think the strat will still work. This stack here drilling is not ideal, though. So the idea. Yeah, they've claimed me my lands here. Hmm. We'll see. We will see. Uh, so we are orthodox as well, by the way. If you guys do know this, we have the Byzantine ideas, which are kind of trash, to be honest with you. These are the vanilla Byzantine ideas. We get advisor cost, tolerance of the true faith, merc maintenance, a little bit of national manpower and goods produced. Those are fine. Tax is fine, I guess. Stab cost is kind of lame. Global trade power is okay. Discipline is good. Missionary strength is good, and then yearly prestige is okay. See what I'm saying? Like, it, it's nothing to write home about. So, they're not going to attack me as long as my army or their army is drilling. So, they'll they'll telegraph it. They'll let me know when they're going to attack me. So, these guys hate me, or I hate them. So, let's not even worry about that anymore. Let's get over here and improve relations with the MAMs. So, let's see here. Who are his rivals? Poland, Austria, Aragon, Venice... They are a rival to the Mamlux. I don't know. Yeah, and we're trying to not lose any money here. Keep, keep the army completely turned off here. Yeah, they're still maintaining it. So these ships here have come in. And as soon as we go to war, we'll get even more ships in Constantinople. So this is really good. Uh, legitimacy for nobility. Ah, eh, sure, man. I don't care. All right. So we have nine galleys. That is actually solid. Like, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Who's got... How many do they have? Like, 12? Oh, they have 9. So we actually matched the galley fleet of the Ottomans. 
And then uh, we have another three here. So these are really good numbers. Let's get an Admiral here. Oh, five maneuver. What a joke. Um, okay. So we really have to wait. I, I can attack at any time. Like we're in a good spot. We could attack him right now. This 14 stack here though is, it's not gonna work, man. It's not gonna work like that. Um, 3-3 three, three general in there too. Holy crap. Consort of the people. We cannot do that. I cannot afford that. Ooh, baby. This yearly prestige loss is bad. Uncontested cores has given us a lot. A dying empire is punishing. Them drilling here on that fort is super bad for us. Uh, yes. Nobility cannot be bought. Let's, uh, it's going to make the burgers disloyal. If I do this. Let's see, Marma. Okay, that's actually... We can get that in the war. Poland's opinion of me, which gives me nobility. Yeah, let's just go with that one. And uh, I'm going to say nobility cannot be bought because now they're going to stay loyal. And we actually get a free stab for it. So that's good. That's really good, actually. Positive stability is going to have a lot of good effects for us. Little stack here drilling is troublesome. It's like Monk Strat is not not gonna work on this one. We really have to just hope that they'll move. We can uh, punch them while they're uh, not expecting it. Hmm. I'm not sure. Also, I do apologize if you guys didn't hear my fan. It is currently like 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside. It is incredibly hot. And uh, I think that ends up translating to like 36 or something like that. 36, I believe. Yeah, like 36 degrees Celsius. So it's hot. It's very hot. And I'm, I'm suffering. So I have a fan on. I apologize if you guys didn't hear it. So, I guess we're going to try this. Um, what you do is you turn your army maintenance on. Turn this fort on. Let the garrison replenish. This one, I think we just delete the fort. Honestly, I don't I don't want to pay for that. I should have done that early on. So, the way this strategy works is uh, you essentially try to snipe out a couple of their forts. We're going to build up a little bit more men here. And then... Um, our navy should be good. As far as I know, we we are good on that front. So the issue is, is that his navy is going to be over here in the Sea of Maramo, Marama, Mar, Marmara. And uh, we need to be mindful of that. So what we want to do here is we need to land two units on Constantinople and ideally get them over into this province here before they turn the fort on. And this one as well. But this one, the fort is... Um, oh, it is Namothbald now. So is Gallipoli. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So this might work. This might work. All right, so let's go here. And first off, let's see here. Do we have any advisors that would make sense? Defensiveness one, maybe? Let's take out a loan, get rid of you, and then hire you. I like that ideal idea. Uh, right, we need two units. Oh, I hate that it selects cab by default. Have them attach here, and we want them to land, you know, a little bit after the monthly tick, because otherwise they will um, turn their fort on if there's naval fight. Okay, so those guys just got into port now. No, not the mercs. What the heck? Absolutely not. Uh, these two guys here. Okay. So these guys will be there on the third. Very good. They're pulling their navy out. That's not ideal, man. Get these guys over here on the sec on the second is fine. So this fort is mothballed. This one they turned on. This one is is also mothballed. Okay. So it looks like we're okay here. Let me land my guys first. Very good. 
call in scanner bro and let's go for like Tarala. that's the one right here so these guys will be there before the end of the month with uh, our admiral or general over here get you guys over here obviously we want to get these guys out here click this mission that way we get those extra four galleys as well as what some burger issues burger things and some permanent claims over here in italy very good very good the bummer that he called in tunis i don't like that but we'll do what we can here now hopefully these guys are not on that fort by the time we get there oh they had another 16 stack over here ooh, ooh, ooh. all right well let's scorch constantinople and turn the defensiveness edict on here that's uh giving us some good defensiveness combined with our defensiveness guy this is blockaded so they can't come through constantinople to fight us they have to march all the way around here so by the time they get here ideally we have the fort let's say scan bro i want you to attach to me instead of running around over there very good so let's take these guys in here have them grouped up here and uh might as well get them grouped up with these this army here all right cool well that went well so far so good uh let's get you guys grouped up there let's go back to uh blockading the uh ports over here we have no general on that army but this 19 stack is very ominously looking at me and that's a 12 7 stack right okay so let's just scorch this one here let's detach you guys have them come like over here and let's do like a it's actually what are you talking about Oh, that's the Athens stack there being dumb. That's fine. I'm okay with them getting wiped out, honestly. So ideally, they're going to come and attack me on like a mountains province. Free Diplomana is fine with me. Now, if they don't want to, that's okay. Our defensiveness is pretty good over here. Oh, wow. Yeah, 50 days each six. That's pretty solid. I'll take that. So ideally, what we do is we scorch these provinces and we bait them into a defensive fight. That's like what I... That's our best case scenario here. Okay, so these guys are a 16 stack. Be here on... Are they taking a river crossing? Okay. A river crossing into a highland. So it's a minus two. And they will be there on the 29th of June? Really? How are they so fast, bro? That doesn't make no sense. Okay. Anyways, let's uh, pull those guys out of there then. Maybe they'll come into this mountain province. That would be even better. Come on now. And you got to remember, now that we have uh, their forts now, we're going to start getting... We have Ticking War score as well. Now I'm really hoping... Yes, this is perfect. We got another mission here, um, which is what? Compromise and Synaxis, which gives us a uh, Diplomat guy. Sounds good. Very good. Those guys will be there on the 27th. We scorched this province. Very good. So we will be able to get there before them. 27th so we want them to lock in there as long as we're there before that nothing else matters very good everyone else will be there in time awesome is that a oh 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 look at that minus three oh, so good yes that's really heavy losses for them and then we can come over here and wipe out this three stack of cav you mean to tell me that these guys had a three stack of cap. That is a... Oh, they teleported their general in, unfortunately. Okay, well, let's fall back here. See if they want to head back into the mountain province. And uh, get stack wiped again. Might take a little bit of attrition, but that's okay. Yes. Oh my gosh, these guys are... They never learn. They never learn. They'll be there on the 18th. And we can be there much before that. Want them to lock in. Very good. We'll, they'll be there on the 18th. And we'll be there on the 15th. How about it, huh? And uh, this is a little micro -y. Shift consolidate. So we have full regiment strength. And uh, oh, wow. They must have rolled really good there. Yeah, they did roll really well there. But that's okay. These guys have really low morale. Oh. Okay. Man. They're down to 20,000 men. Our manpower is getting low. Oh my gosh, really?
I'm not paying for that. Cool. All right, let's get over here. See if we can bait them into a bad fight there as well. Those cannons will be there. Okay, they're attacking here. River crossing as well. Very good. Be there on the second. These guys will be... We can get there way before then. So, hopefully they lock in soon. Yep, very good. Shift consolidate. Shift consolidate because your mercs are always, always in the front. Very good. There's a minus three for him. Oh my gosh. Yes, we are destroying them. Never underestimate. Never, ever underestimate how strong Scorched Earth is. I promise you that. Okay. So they just got manpower. Are they slackening their standards already? Do they have um, army tradition this early? Ooh, they're at 23%. Oh, professionalism. They do. They have 6%. Sheesh. All right. This nine stack here. Is this scorched? It is not scorched. Though I do think we want to attack these guys here. No, I lied. I do want to attack this, uh, this these two cav though. This is good. Because uh, two cav, that's very expensive for them. Okay. We are very quickly exhausting them. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure about this one. It's a river crossing into hills. Even though they don't have a general, I think it's probably not in our best interest. Let's, um... Come on now. Hurry up. There we go. Quarantine. Ugh. These events, man. All right. Let's get onto his capital here. See if we can take it quickly. What are you talking? What are you on about? Get... Okay. All right. So, base race time. I suppose this is not ideal. Let's um detach like a couple of tra transport ships because his entire navy is right here. There's three ships over there and then Tunis has some ships. This is okay. As long as we're not detaching galleys, I don't care because we can get some extra war score from blockading. <sighs> He's going to take the war goal back. Ooh. We are very close to this. If, hmm. I don't know, man. All right, these two guys over here. Forgot about them. Bit of a misplay. He got a wall breach, bro. What? <sighs> Status quo. All right. Well, that's not going to work. <laughs> got a freaking wall breach. Let's see why are why are they pathing differently? Take the same path, idiots. Why are they pathing differently? Please path the same. Thank you. Let's get them off that fort there. Even if we lose, okay. They um. Oh my gosh. Oof. All right, some good rolls there at the very end saved our skin. Get the ticking war score back. Very important. Ooh, 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 ooh. 10th of November. Very good. Sadly, we didn't get the, um, the ticking war score back, but this battle will be really good for us. Let's see here. Shock damage received. Yes. That's going to be really good for us here. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. All right. Oh, my gosh. What an absolute slugfest this is. Look at his war exhaustion going up. Mine's up high, too, but I don't care. I can live with this. Oh, he's at war with Venice, too. My man. My man. All right, lads. I think that's it. I think that uh, we've, we've, we've done did it. Okay. So these guys are heading over into Gallipoli. So this is Grasslands. We don't have Scanderbro with us, so... Oh, Scanderbro dead. Did he die? He did. All right, let's get onto his capital. We might not actually need to even take it.
let's see here. Let's um detach and have some guys come down to Gallipoli. Just standing on his forts might give him enough reasons here. Hmm. Let's see here. Now, the best case scenario... Oh, we got a wall breach. Oh my gosh. Is it that streamer luck? <laughs> Holy crap. Nice. Oh, we got a... Oh, disease outbreak. Giveth and taketh away, right? Hopefully... Yeah. To be expected at this point. We were getting too lucky there. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah, that's not a win for us. We need to get out of there ASAP. Don't want to get wiped. All right, now they're on high enthusiasm. <laughs> Feeling good. Excited to continue the war, they said. All right, we just need to prevent them from attacking me. Oh my, are you kidding? Out of the fog of war. And I can't peace out because they're on. Screw it. Screw it. We're going to do it. <sighs> it's not ideal, but it really is going to have to do. Let's turn these forts on here. Yeah, this is definitely not ideal, but um, I wasn't going to risk losing it all because of one bad battle. These guys probably would have gotten stack wiped, so... Um, you guys can get gone. These guys are, we are way over our limit. So let's, um, all right, let's get these guys down here. The Phoenix rises. Okay, cool. So we get a couple of things from that. Sadly, we couldn't get the uh, mission from that. But if we, in the next war, if we occupy this province and this province, I think we'll have it given to us, which would be good. As far as naval stuff goes, we're a bit over our naval limit. I think I will actually just delete my transports. Because I'd much rather have the galleys. I'm not going to completely consolidate them. But I will get rid of a few of the excess ones. That's going to help us out a bit as well. So let's pay off a couple of our more expensive loans. Our interest is okay. I'm going to sell crown titles. If we don't have to go bankrupt, I don't want to. Now our interest is going to be pretty bad, but not terrible. Manageable. All right. These forts are very redundant, but I'm going to keep them for now. At the very least, to get rid of the um, devastation. Ugh. It's always such a pyrrhic victory playing as Byzantium. It's very hard to get just an absolute just destruction, right? Let's get rid of you guys. And uh, that will allow us to be in the green now. We just let our stuff go down. We don't have any... Oh, right. Albania is going to break alliance because I didn't give him clay. Screw you. I don't care. I'll break alliance with you already. Neutral attitude. Who, do we, who can we ally? That's the question. We need some allies here. Venice hates me. Okay. His rivals are Aragon. Ooh, that'd be a good one. Too many Diplo, re re Diplo relations? Uh, what about... Uh, yes. So that's not going to happen. Too many Diplo relations. They'd actually be very willing... They'd be close to willing to consider it, but uh, that's okay. All right. Well, overall, I think that went Okay. It's definitely not ideal, but uh, we finally broke out of uh, our initial starting position. So that's pretty good. I was on attempt, I think, three for me. So it's just that initial thing. Uh, it was a couple of like, I'd land and then they'd turn the fort on and I would get stuck in a naval battle and, uh, you know, a couple of things like that. But that's okay. It ended up working out fine in the end. So hungry. <laughs> Let's see here. We don't have a very long truce with them. Theodoro is not a worthwhile ally. Serbia is getting beat up by Hungary. The Renaissance is here. Nothing I can do about that. Let's uh, debase the currency there as well. 
I don't have any Patriarch Authority. Oh, I have six. Speaking of, actually, I believe you actually can do it through here. Yeah, I always forget about that event. Or that uh, that thing there. Uh, I can lose the Prestige. We don't have any anyway, so it's fine with me. That will allow us to get Pursuit Religious Ideals, which gives us National Unrest Stab Cost Modifier. That's nice. And uh, gain an extra five if we have at least 25, 20 Patriarch Authority. So consecrate that Metropolitan... But, um, oh, right. We also need to state this. This is already a state. Let's turn that uh, edict onto trade, actually. And let's state you, since you're already a core. I would rather wait and get the extra Patriarch Authority, I think. So we just hold on to it and wait a couple of years until we click this mission. I think that's fine. So we're making money. We're making pretty good money, actually. And, uh... As long as we pay off... Why are these at the bottom now? Oh, they renewed. Okay. So, yep. We want to repay all the ones that are coming up due soon. And then... Um, we're good. We're good. All right. Let's speed five for a little bit here. I have my army maintenance turned down low, but not all the way off. And I've been warned by the Ottomans. Yeah, okay. I'll take that mil tech and uh, I'll lose more prestige because I don't care. I'm not going to get fall behind on tech. If I can avoid that, I'm definitely going to avoid that. Empire runs on paper. Free admin mana. I love admin mana. And the onus is just, so we get national unrest. Very good. And he died immediately after I said that. So there we go. So we have Constantinos, the uh, 322. It's okay. A 333 air Zoe. Not bad. Um, cool. Cool. That's fine with me, I suppose. Um, repay this loan. And we're down to eight loans from our first war with the Ottomans. And our interest is quite low now, which is good. Uh, let's see here. Devastation is all gone in Gallipoli, so we can turn that fort off. I'm going to keep this fort just because it's strategic. It is a hills fort on the, the straight crossing. I know that it is redundant with the fort in Constantinople, but I'm going to keep it anyways. Might be an unpopular opinion, but I think it'll be worth. I think. It might be not worth, but... My goal here is since the piece that we took with them is going to be pretty short. My goal is going to be to attack them and call in Wallachia as a, uh, as a belligerent here. Because their truce is up. So that's good. Uh, what about these guys over here? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. These guys do not have a truce at all. If I ally them, that may actually give me an opportunity to... Um... Oh, this is good. This is really good. We might be able to make something happen here, guys. If we can hug box in the Ottomans and just destroy them, that would be perfect. Sadly, my my little army is uh, not improve impressive impressing anybody rather, and having negative prestige also hurts our uh, improved relations quite a bit as well. What if I switched over here to that one? That will help with Kandar and Karaman. So give us a little bit of extra improved relations. Yes, very good. Three, and then I'm going to guarantee these guys in case the Ottomans want to attack them. And that will allow me to ally them as well. All right. We now have the Ottomans hug boxed in. And I'm hopeful that they will, these guys will join. Oh, they peaced out? No, no, no. They're still getting beat up on, though. Okay, very good. Our truce was up when? 57. So we're, we're going to wait on that for a little bit. That's okay. So in order to concentrate, consecrate this one down here, we need 30 development. Yeah, it's not going to happen. I'm going to just yoink this dev here. And I always explain when I do this. The reason why I do this exploiting development is basically it allows me to get more money in my pocket right now because you don't make that much money from tax. I mean, you could argue that maybe I shouldn't do it this early, but it's really not a big deal. It's really not. It's, it's for the greater good. Uh, everybody's loyal. So let's take crown land now. And we just need to continually uh, take this and get our crown land up. Always use more soldiers. Yes, please. Um, this is good. This is good. All right. That uh, that was an all right war. Oh, man. I know I'm going to get comments saying, oh, I, I, sh I did it this way. I took out like 57 million loans and I bankrupted myself. It's just not my style, guys. I really am not really not keen on going bankrupt if I can avoid it. 
I have this strong aversion to bankruptcy in this game. I know people like, uh, you know, Zlevik and Habibi and all these crazy multiplayer guys are like, Oh, dude, you can bankrupt like every war. <laughs> Not me. Not me. Like I said, I just have an aversion to it. So I'm hopeful that uh, we don't have to deal with a Regency, but uh, we may, but it's okay. Hey, nice. Prestige and Constantinople gets Renaissance support. That's fine with me. We've already paid off all of our big loans. These are all burger loans, 1% interest. So we're back to basically making money again. This fort can be turned off again. And there we go. We're now making decent money. Um, Athens is not going to have any issues with... Lit, uh, what's this called? Uh, loyalty. I'm actually going to improve relations with them and annex them ASAP. So these guys just lost the war to Dulcadir, apparently. What was that about? <laughs> Alright, man. I missed it, apparently. So... It is going to hurt our inflation, but I think I'm just going to hold on to these loans. I'm not going to pay them off. We just need to start save letting our money stack up here until we can get to a point where we are... Um... Ooh. Gain money, gain burger loyalty, and gain relations with the uh, Moog or Mamluks. All good stuff, honestly. They're preparing to attack Crimea. Is that what that said? Uh oh. They're, prepare they're preparing to attack Kandar, aren't they? Well, let's turn our army maintenance up here. Really? Oh, 14 year, 13 year regency. That's not ideal. That's okay. Nope, they're drilling. Okay. I wish I would have seen that before the monthly tick there because I just took out an extra loan. For literally no reason. Oh, no, I didn't. I just have money in the bank. All right, very good. Okay, that's fine. The recovery continues. Nice. I lose Diplotech right as I'm about... Or Diplomana right before I take Diplotech. Unfortunate. But if you guys have never seen uh, Idea Groups expanded, it adds quite a bit. Um... A lot of mill groups specifically, uh, but you can see here an Artemis UI pairs very well with this uh, idea group or with this mod. Um, it adds a lot of basically kind of like, I don't know how to say it, dynamic. Like you, if you're Christian, you obviously get Christian ideas. If you're Muslim, you get Muslim ideas, those sorts of things. Um, we can really, really diversify how your, your play style is when you're taking military ideas. A lot of them are really interesting. Um, there's a few changes, I believe, like economic has been nerfed to only 10 development, things like that, but uh, still quite strong and uh, quite interesting to try it out. Um, yep, I am not going to fight rebels. I definitely can't be doing that. Financial, they sold their fort to the Ottomans. You guys are dumb. You were really dumb. I suppose what we could do is we could attack these guys. Oh, right, I'm warned. I should have probably done that before, but that's okay. Ain't a big deal. All right. Oh. We're getting there. We're almost at 20. Then it says cancel military access. We'll be able to uh, use one of these guys for the next war with the Ottomans. Here's the big thing. This 13 stack over there, they won't be able to get over here once, they, uh, once we declare war again. They're going to be sucked there. Because unless they march all the way around, because we have the straits covered, we will be able to full occupy them all over here, including their capital, hopefully, before they march men over. Unless they have some, and then in that case, we're going to dogpile on them and try to kill them instantly. Immediately. Um, let's extend these loans. It's going to hurt our inflation. It's fine. Inflation is not going to be a big deal for us early on. Did we get rid of that dying empire? How do we get rid of that again? So it was something about it was one of these 
Imperial Throne. Stability of at least one. And legitimacy. Okay. Uh, I think that was what it, one of them that it said. I can't recall. Oh my gosh, 25 for a Regency? Kiss my butt, dude. <sighs> pain. That's all I feel is pain. More manpower, please. Always take the manpower. It's overpowered. As I said, base tax is not going to get you nearly as much. Oh my gosh, stop. Stop raiding me, please. Please stop raiding me. Patriarch Authority, very good. So, we now have extra Patriarch Authority. We can click this one to get five more. Which we can use to get uh, this one here, which will give us more manpower recovery. As well as discipline. And uh, it will still be in effect long into the war with the Ottomans. They are allied to Gazik, Muk, and Tunis. Knights are still raiding me because they're bastards. So let's turn these forts on here. Boost our stab. We need to boost our stab to at least one. Oh, there we go. A dying empire will be removed and we gain another stab and legitimacy. Very good. Awesome. Okay. So that means our prestige will now actually be trending upwards, which is good. Crown allegiance. Crown land and burger. Everybody needs to be in no loans and we get some free crown land. Okay. Embrace uh, encyclopedism. Dev it up and have a natural advisor and uh, innovative admin tech at least seven. Okay. Trade it up. Okay, very good, very good, very good. I think in the next episode, we are going to attack the Ottomans. Uh, preventing the collapse. Development has grown by at least 50. Okay, we'll be able to get that before too long, I think. Maybe even in this next war. In this last war, we took 10, so 17 dev. Yeah, it's going to be a little tough, but I'll see. We'll see what we can do. I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode. I know I did. Uh, everybody tends to like Byzantium. I myself love playing Byzantium. So if you guys are enjoying it and you want to show your support, as I said, leaving a like on the video helps us out more than you know. And uh, if you want to subscribe, ding the bell. And um, check me out over at twitch.tv slash Chewy Shoot. I do stream multiple days a week. But uh, real big, if you guys have it within your means and you like what you see and you want to support content that you like, Patreon is linked in the description below. And uh, it was really much appreciated if it's within your means and you want to support. Uh, so consider that. But uh, other than that, that's all I got for you. This is Chewy Shoot, and I'm going to catch you guys later. A huge special thanks to my top July patrons, Junk Binary, Mr. McFlew, Angelic, Bouncer Steve, Sprocket, Fat Man on Deck, Jay Eden, Jay Clampett, Jay Kapchinski, M. Dressel, R. Lawrence, R. Epp, Jay Baller, Lon Damon, Draco Arhavis, Orbit, Jankopotamus, P. Jarden, A. Vickman, Arkenglad, Harry, A. Murado, Jay Cutchell, and Winkler, R. J. Pilant, and many more. I appreciate you guys very much.